I am super excited. Remember when we did that episode called Ancestry, Are You Listening? Well, they listen. There are some new features being rolled out right now that directly answer some of the requests that we as a genealogical community have been asking for. I can't wait to show you. Now, I asked Krista Cowan of Ancestry fame to come on the show and tell us about these new features and when we can expect to see them on our dashboard. Oh, I forgot to tell you, there is a handout for this episode. If you wanna check that out, make sure you look in the description box at how to get the handout. Now, if you wanna stay in the know, make sure you hit the subscribe button and ring the bell so that you get notified when these new features on any of your favorite platforms are being rolled out. I try and get them on as quickly as possible. All right, let's get started. Krista, welcome back. I understand you've got some new features to share with us uh, about the Ancestry platform, some collaboration stuff some cool tools. And I think some of these are some of the tools we may have been teasing about at Roots Tech. Yeah, we did tease some of them at Roots Tech, but we've got some more robust features and some of the features that we kind of beta tested back then have uh -huh. been built into full-fledged releases now. So we're seeing those start to roll out on the site right now. Awesome. Well, tell us about them. Share your screen. Do whatever you need to do to okay. educate yeah. us. You're going to see my family tree, starting with my grandfather in that um, primary position there. And one of the things that new users may notice, or users may notice newly, is the activity button. That's going to show up both here in the tree view and if you click through to the profile page of a person in your tree, look for the little clock. Um, that's what you're going to see. Under there, you're going to have a couple of different features. One is a tasks tab and one is a changes tab. Now my tasks tab looks a little boring right now, but um, here's what's going to show up in that space. So right now, every user on Ancestry can decide if they want their tree to be public or private. A public tree just means anyone with an Ancestry subscription can see the dead people in your tree. Living people, of course, are privatized. A private tree means, a private searchable tree means people will know your tree exists. If they search for someone in your tree, they'll be told that that person is in the tree. But if they wanna see anything else, you would have to invite them to the tree. So anyone who can see your tree, whether it's public or private, um, is can comment on any person in your tree. And that may be news to some people, but you can make comments um, if you have more information about the person, if you've tried to um, work with somebody through private messaging and they are not responding and they've got something incorrect in their tree, I've used it to kind of flag incorrect information uh, so that when other people view that tree, they're not led down the wrong path. Uh, lots of different ways that I've seen comments used. But one of the challenges has always been as the tree owner, I don't always know who in my tree has had a comment made on them and how I go find that. So we're just going to keep a running list here in the tasks tab. And that's the first new feature under that activity button in our trees. What yeah. questions have you got? <laughs> <laughs> Lots of them. Uh, first of all, not everybody has this as of this recording, correct? Correct. It is currently being rolled out to users. And one of the ways we know that is um, Ancestry actually puts a beta tag on everything. So it's already been through extensive testing and user feedback cycles. But when we're rolling it out to users, we always just like to leave that little beta tag on there so that people know it's still in the process of being released to everyone. Now, is this worldwide release or is this U.S. and Canada? What, what's going yeah, on there? It will be a global release. And so you also have the changes tab there. Yeah. So the other feature here under activities is it, ex it shows you what other people are doing in your tree. Now on Ancestry, your tree is your tree and you as the tree owner have full control over what happens to it, but you can invite other people to collaborate with you on your tree. So I own my family tree and I have shared it with at least eight or nine other people. My parents both have full editor access, which means they can do anything in my tree that I can do. Um, my siblings all just have guest access. Apparently, I don't trust them very much. <laughs> <laughs> but as the tree owner, I'm always just a smidge nervous because I don't know what my dad's doing or what my mom's doing. And now this new activity changes tab shows me like I can see right now my dad is very actively working on the tree as of 45 minutes ago. <laughs> um, 
connecting records, adding yearbook photos to some of the people in the tree. Um, and so I can see exactly what he's doing. And I can even drill down to that person in the tree and look at the changes. So if he does anything I don't like or that I disagree with, I can actually go in and review that. And then I can change it back uh, or have a conversation with him because sometimes it's just a matter of giving some of those new collaborative family members a little bit of training on either how to use the platform or how to do genealogy. All right, just to be clear, the changes tab here is for those people that you have invited to your tree, but the tasks tab is where you will find comments from other people who maybe have just found you through searching for their own ancestors, correct? Correct, yeah. So. So anybody that can view your tree can leave a comment. They can't edit or change or delete anything from your tree, but they can leave a comment on individual people in your tree. Okay, so let's think about this for a minute. There's a lot of great things going on here, but there could potentially maybe be some unwanted comments. Is yeah. there something that we can do to stop unwanted comments or... Yeah, Can so we comment back things. to them? Is yeah. that through the messaging center? <laughs> yeah, there are a couple of things. So you'll always have a profile link. So you'll know who made the comment and you can click through to view their profile. On okay. their profile page, there's a couple of things you can do. One is you can see if they're a DNA match or not. The other is you can see what public family trees they have and you can look through their trees to see how or if they might be connected to you. Um, it's a really great opportunity to reach out and connect with and collaborate with other users. The other thing that I would really recommend is that on that profile page, you can send messages to people. And communicating with people privately feels a little bit, I think, safer. It feels a little, and, and it's all through the Ancestry yeah. platform. So you don't have to give anybody your <laughs> private email or, um, and so I would always recommend people have conversations there first. Sometimes I think people, including myself, leave comments, public comments on a tree because we've sent messages and those messages have not been responded to. And so we don't know if the person on the other end, you know, is dead or doesn't come to Ancestry ever anymore, or like we have no idea. And so we make those public comments because we don't want other people coming and viewing that information and being led down a wrong path. But if I'm active in keeping my tree, I should be responding to those messages because I think that will mitigate some of what I think you perceive as people might be just randomly leaving comments on my tree. I think it's a great way to also, you know, as we're doing our DNA research and we're finding some of these people that um, we maybe have messaged with in the past and they said, hey, I'm adopted or, you know, whatever, and they don't know how they fit into the tree. It's a great way to go back and say, hey, I think I, this ancestor may be part of your family or I might have more information about this uh, person. And so, yeah, it's, I think it's a good opportunity to um, collaborate more uh, yeah. on the Ancestry platform. Yeah, okay. and one of, the, one of the challenges that that people have had or that people have expressed to Ancestry, which is I think one of the reasons that this particular feature has come out uh -huh. is um, oftentimes people send messages, private messages to another user and they say, I found my grandpa on your tree and I don't know how we're related. Well, exactly. if I receiving that message have two or three trees on my account and I don't know who your grandpa is, I can't engage in that conversation. But if they leave a comment on my tree, on the person in the tree and say, hey, this is my grandpa, right? Like now I, as the tree owner, at least have some kind of a way to initiate a relationship or a conversation with that person. So when I go to my ancestor's profile, am I going to see a red dot or something that says, hey, there's a comment here? Yeah, so right in the header, right there under the death date, you'll see um, if you have personally added notes, notes are private, uh, you'll see right. a little note icon right next to that. You'll see a little comment icon if a comment has been added by yourself or by other people. Sometimes I leave comments on my own tree <laughs> just so people can see it. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'll, 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 yeah, and I'll make yeah public comments too. Sometimes I'll put elaborate notes like, Yep. <laughs> done extensive research and this is why it's this way <laughs> he doesn't have parents don't add parents to him nobody knows who they are <laughs> right exactly hey we're going to get back to that video here in just a moment but i want to let you know that genealogy tv has a website a newsletter and a facebook page links for all of that are in the description box below the video all right let's get back to it 
Okay, so we've got some more features that I understand you don't have access to just yet, but I think I do. So I'm going to share my screen and you're going to walk me through what we're doing here. So here I have an ancestor who does not have a lot of information and I picked this one on purpose. So we're talking about this little question mark, right? Yeah. So you'll see the little clock, which is what I was just talking about from the tree view. You're now in the person okay. profile okay. view. So there's the clock and I don't have access to the tasks yet. Right. But the <laughs> question all, all mark. The features were rolling out. <laughs> yes. Right. Um, so yeah. So the question mark is a place to go to get help when you get stuck in your tree. And the new feature that I think I'm most excited about is that top one there, which is ask family for help. And so currently you can send an email to anyone in your family. So if your mom or your aunt or your mom's cousin, or I mean, like anybody in the family that you think might know something about this person, you can send them a message or a, an email request to um, see if they have any additional information. The great thing about this feature is they do not have to have an Ancestry account. So when you share your tree with someone, they do have to have an account. But when you ask for a, make a request, it's just a form and you just send it off and then they respond and you'll get that notification. And if you like the information they've shared, you can copy that into your tree. So yeah, I did notice there's a little difference. So if I click on send an email, it actually sends an email. It actually pre-populates an email uh -huh. from my email um, service. Yep. And here, what I just demonstrated was just copying the link uh -huh. takes me to this information. So I could actually manually yeah. create an email to a, maybe a group of people in my own email service uh -huh. and just attach that link and say, or hey, what do you guys know? Yeah. You could send a text. <laughs> or I could send a text. Yeah. Just cut, paste the link in, in a text message. Very cool. All right. So now we've got this other here message yeah, so and ancestry member, which I'm not going to click into because I got a whole list of people there, but sure. Yeah. So this is just a way, like if you know, for example, that you've worked with somebody before, or that maybe Abraham Davis is one of your through lines in DNA, and you've got some genetic cousins who, who appear to connect to them. Um, it's just a way to go from this profile. And again, send a message to an ancestry user. The difference now is I used to get messages all the time. Like I said, you know, my grandpa's in your tree and I don't know what tree or who their grandpa is. Well, this right. will link right back to Abraham Davis. So when I send a message to that user, they know exactly who I'm talking about and in what tree. Okay. So now what are, what's, uh, let's take a look at this one. Yeah, so the Ancestry community features have been around for a really long time. We've just moved them now into this little community side panel because a lot of people didn't know to go hunting for them under the help menu item across the top there. Um, and so it's a way to get to, particularly to the message boards, Ancestry message boards, which are a mirror of the Roots Web message boards have been around since the 1990s. And there's surname message board, there are location message boards. And even with the rise of Facebook groups there, I'm, I'm surprised at how active some of those message boards still are. Now, that is not the same as Member Connect. Correct. Member Connect is where you go to see who else has Abraham Davis in their tree. And can I watch, essentially, can I connect to that person's tree so that I can watch what changes they make to Abraham Davis in their tree? Yeah, it is kind of fun, huh? Anything else that you want to share? You know what, those are the big collaboration or community tools that we've rolled out um, or are in the process of currently rolling out. We do have, of course, some um, other updates that have been made outside of the collaboration space. I'm happy to share those if you want. Yeah, please do. Yeah, so uh, the big news right now is around DNA communities. So okay. Ancestry just rolled out 413 African American communities uh, in the US South. And so that brings our genetic communities in the Ancestry DNA product to over 2000. Uh, and it just amazes me in some cases that the, the DNA is showing that we can get down to like a 10 mile square area of land where people in your family have lived within the last 200 years. And those communities are just so, so powerful. 
And so super excited about being able to now serve uh, another population of people in that Ancestry DNA product. So remind everyone how they get to the DNA communities. In fact, you might even want to show it if you can. Yeah. Okay. So if you go to your DNA story, that's where you're going to go when you see your ethnicity estimate. Um, so your ethnicity estimate is looking at where your DNA was 500 to 1,000 years ago. We compare your DNA to a modeled population of people from around the world. You'll always see those with a solid colored circle and a percentage next to them. That's how you know it's a ethnicity estimate. But then if you keep scrolling, uh, what you're looking for are the communities. And communities, I've got two of them, one from each of my parents, interestingly enough. Uh, those do not have a percentage next to them and they come in a dotted circle. So that's how you kind of tell the difference between an ethnicity in a community. And those communities are showing where you have family members who have lived within the last 200 years. So it's a, a really distinct connection to a specific population of people, to a specific place. And like I said, sometimes we can get right down to just a very small square miles worth of, of property. <laughs> That's awesome. It is. I think a lot of people forget about this timeline too, that's um, well, showing where it shows the overview. And uh, yeah. when you kind of get into the middle of that, yeah, you can see the the migration patterns over time, which is kind of neat. And it gives a little story. Um, yeah. I think yeah. We've got lots of um, professors, uh, historians, like we work with a large cadre of academics uh, who help us write these detailed stories about these places and vet this information and these timelines. And it's just, I love this. If I didn't know anything about my family history, if I was brand new to this experience, this is really powerful to, to connect with. But even knowing what I know, right? Like my mom's people came from those places in the world and in the 1700s, sure enough, they immigrated to the Carolinas and then um, on over to Tennessee. And you can kind of just follow that migration pattern. And that's exactly the migration pattern that my family took. My great, my grandparents were born and raised in Northwest Arkansas. And then um, shortly after World War I, they both immigrated to Southern California, which is where my mom was raised. So that it just tells the story of my family right there in that timeline. Now, let me ask you, are these little snippets of history also in Story Scout? Some of them are, yeah. We've, we've leveraged some of that same text in some of those Story Scout stories. Yeah, I think Story Scout is an un another underutilized thing. A lot of people I think have forgotten uh, about Story Scout. You know what, you can access it through the DNA menu. Uh, anything we can look forward to <laughs> coming up that yeah, you can talk so, about? Yeah, so one of the other collaboration tools that we're just starting to roll out right now I don't even have it, um, is what we're calling Ancestry Circles for Messaging. So uh, we announced at Roots Tech this idea of being able to group, to send a group message on Ancestry mm -hmm. to multiple people at the same time. Uh, the feedback we got as we were rolling that product out was people didn't want to have to type in the names or find the people every time. So could we just create like a family text, right? Like, could we create a group of people that are just fixed? And so when I want to message this group of people, I just click that one thing um, instead of having to type in the names of all the people every time. So that is currently uh, just started rolling out and we'll go global as well. I did notice some, at least I think there were some changes um, in the messaging center where at the bottom, when you're getting ready to send a message, there's the uh, image icon and now when you click on that, instead of it just being a list of all the images in my entire tree, it's broken out by ancestor. So uh -huh. kudos to you guys for that, because it's a whole lot easier now to find those images um, based on parts of the family tree instead of yeah. trying to surf through yeah. all of them. <laughs> It is. Yeah. There's an interesting um, like way that our product managers work, and it's true of most technology companies, which is, um, you know, we want to put out, like we do tons of user testing and user feedback and mock-ups of things and, and interviews with customers. Um, and that's kind of how products are developed. But when a product is developed, you don't want to spend a whole lot of money and resources developing some thing in its entirety before you put it out to the customer, because customers 
may have different feedback. They may use it differently than you expected. Mm -hmm. And so we put out what's called a minimally viable product or an MVP, which is what we did with group messaging, right? Just put it out there and see what people, how people respond. And so anytime you are in any of these new product experiences that are rolling out, you'll almost always see a little feedback box pop up in the bottom right-hand corner of your screen. Um, and I would strongly encourage people <laughs> uh, right to- there. Yep. Oh. There yeah, it is. And, and do it like when you're using like like when you're using the experience, because then this feedback survey goes to the product manager responsible for that part of the ancestry experience. And they review those in, in total every week. They have meetings to kind of go through that feedback, both quantitatively and qualitatively. And that's how they continue to evolve the product and tighten up the features or add additional features around a particular experience on the site. That is good to know because sometimes, you know, when we're leaving feedback, we think it just goes into this giant pool of feedback <laughs> and knowing that if we do it from where we were having trouble or where we were experiencing something, it goes directly and it, and it, now it does tie to, does it tie to that person's page as well? Or um, I think, that? yeah, I think we do have links so that if there are real problems or real questions that might need a response. Um, we can, we have the, you know, customer information, we have the tree information, um, but usually what they're doing is they're looking at that set of feedback kind of in total around a product experience. Um, so don't expect a personal response to those, that feedback always. But it may magically Sometimes, get but, fixed, who knows? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Yeah. This is awesome. They're actually listening and implementing the requests that we have been asking for. So kudos to Ancestry. They are working on our requests whenever they can. So think about it for a moment. If your requests are implemented, not only does it give customer satisfaction, but it also helps Ancestry's platform become a better platform day after day. So it's a win-win situation for everyone. So keep your suggestions and comments coming in the comment sections on this video on the Ancestry platform because they are listening. Also know that that feature that she was talking about where you can request uh, from the Ancestry platform on the page that you wish that update to happen goes directly to the product managers. And so they are reading those doesn't mean you're going to get a response, but it sounds like they are paying attention. So make sure you grab a hyperlink of this video and share it on your social media so that everybody is aware of what's going on. And please make sure you are subscribed. All right. There are more videos on the screen for you now for your binge watching pleasure. We'll catch you in the next one.